we like to welcome you guys to the AFC podcast. We're getting ready to talk about that person that you see in the center of the screen right there. And he is the subject of a murder of a little girl and an abuser of many children inside his own home. He is the biological father. And this is just something that we, we cannot stand for, especially when fathers, we are battling for our rights and battling for our children. And this type of thing that this guy has been not only arrested for, but sentenced for, sets us all back as men. And we need to stand up and speak out against this. So a Henderson father was sentenced Thursday, this past Thursday, to life in prison for beating his three-year-old daughter by the name of Abigail Bennett. So between this picture right there, which looks like she might have two black eyes, it's really hard to tell. And that picture right there, Abigail is A-B-Y-G-A-I-L Bennett. She was three years old. And her father, by the name of Justin Tom Bennett, 26 years old, pled guilty to the murder and 31 counts of child abuse after prosecutors said that he tortured his three young daughters for about 18 months, leading to the death of a three-year-old girl by the name of Abigail Bennett. Who they sought the death penalty, but they made a plea deal with the father. Where was the deal for Abby, the girl's aunt, Carrie Anderson said, and asked the district judge, David Barker, before he handed down Justin Bennett's sentence. Why wasn't she given a way out? Where was her escape from the death penalty? Mm. In 36 hours leading up to Abigail's death, brace yourselves guys, this little three-year-old girl suffered a broken back, three broken ribs and severe blunt force trauma where she was hit so hard in her chest with so much force in this three-year-old girl's little chest that it tore her right atrium of her heart. Justin Bennett's indictment details more abuse, stating that Justin would hit and kick the girls. Wow. Hmm. He would throw them against a wall. He would force feed them hot foods, cover their mouths and plug their noses. And even in one instance, court documents state that Bennett sliced one girl's unhealed wound open. Justin Bennett will be eligible for parole after he serves 50 years in prison. So by this point, he will be 76 years old. Eligible for parole. Why does he even get an opportunity? Why does he get a crack at parole? I don't understand that, but he's also ordered to pay $5,000 in restitution to the state's victims of crime fund, but that's pretty standard. Now, according to the document, the young father would kick and punch the two girls, throw them against the wall, force feed them mustard and cover their mouths and noses as punishment for lying. The father, Justin Bennett, will also make baby Abigail and her older sister stand against walls. And if they fell down or cried from exhaustion, he would beat them. Keep in mind, these are three-year-olds and four-year-olds. He would also force feed them white habanero peppers. I'm sorry, I just get I just get lost in these stories sometimes. He would force feed them white habanero peppers. How does that count as a punishment? And why would you torture human beings like that? Like, how does your mind even think to work like that? These were so hot, it would cause the children to foam at the mouth, said the prosecutor. Jesus Christ, wow. Their eyes would be bleeding with tears and he would cover their mouths until they would swallow. Oh my goodness. On one occasion, according to the indictment, Justin Bennett cut open a wound on the head of one of the girls that has not healed as punishment. Mm. 
that is the biological mother. That is Kori Morimoto. I don't know if she's Japanese. I don't give a fuck what she is. She is a shitty ass mother. That's what she is. What is her nationality? Shitty mom. Mm-hmm. That's what her nationality is. Shitty mom. She mom. <laughs> That's what her nationality is. She mom. Anyway, let me stop. The mother also faced charges initially, but her charges got dropped. Y'all want to know why? She secretly filmed the biological father, Justin Bennett's abuse of the girls, and she turned over more than 20 videos to the police before Abigail's death. The mom watched it happen. She videotaped it and she got off. She got off scot-free because she turned over the videos to convict him. Now, how in the hell does that work? Doesn't that actually make it worse? You videotaped it, you watched it happen, you watched your daughters be murdered, and you don't do life in prison just because you told them like, hey, I got videotape of him actually doing it. So that means you allowed it to happen. You probably encouraged it to happen. Maybe even participating in it happening. But mom don't get a life sentence. Mom don't go to jail. Mom don't get parole in 50 years. Really? And y'all tell me that the system is fair? Last year, the county reached a $100,000 settlement with Bernadine Morimoto, who was the grandmother, who claimed in a lawsuit that the county welfare officials botched the handling of their child protective services case by delegating it to a contractor who was only equipped to handle low priority cases. The two surviving girls are in therapy, Bernadine Morimoto said, and the oldest still wakes up screaming after nightmares about Justin Bennett and his mother, Corey. She said the girls still run and hide when they hear people at the front door and don't talk much about the abuse for fear that Justin Bennett or his mother, Corey Morimoto, will still punish them. The child abuse investigation revealed that Justin Bennett had forced mustard into his daughter's mouth when they lied and made them take cold showers as punishment. Henderson police wrote in a statement at the time of Bennett's arrest, but Child Protective Services found that there was no present or impending danger to the girls and recommended both parents take parenting classes. And I try my best not to blame it on CPS because ultimately it was these two assholes fault. The reason why these children suffered the way that they did. And the reason why three-year-old Abigail is dead. It's their fault. Both of their fault. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Gears now a father has been arrested for his young daughter's murder and now neighbors are shedding light on what it was like the moment the girl was taken from that house. 13 Action News reporter David Schumann has this tragic story from Henderson. No answer at the home of Justin Bennett here. The 23 year old is arrested for killing his three year old daughter, Abigail. Now neighbors across the street told us that they were in shock as they watched the little girl be carried away by police. The same little girl that they've seen play in the street out here so many times. It, it's very heartbreaking, you know. And we were just hoping that the girl was okay, you know. I mean, they rushed her. They, they got her out of here as fast as they could. That neighbor says Bennett's wife is in the military and is currently out of state. The investigation revealed Abigail died of blunt force trauma to the chest. Neighbors saw Henderson police interviewing Bennett for a long time after his daughter was taken away. He was arrested the next day. Well, he went to school with my daughter, but a uh, uh, long time ago, and, and uh, that's all we know about him. 
but he was a nice guy. Abigail's two siblings were home when this all happened. Those children are now staying with their grandparents. Near Windmill and Pecos, David Schumann, 13 Action News. A Henderson father will spend at least 50 years in prison after he was convicted of killing his three-year-old daughter. It happened back in 2016. Justin Bennett was sentenced to 50 years to life on 32 counts, including murder and child abuse. The coroner says his daughter Abigail had a ruptured heart and other chest injuries too. She died from blunt chest trauma tied to an assault with chronic physical abuse. They deserve to have parents that actually cared about them, that protected them and guided them. And all they got was just people who cared so much about each other that they didn't even care about the lives that they produced together. These two jackasses, and I'm going to make sure I get you their names again. Justin Tom Bennett, 26 years old. The biological mother's name is Corey, K-O-R-I-E, Morimoto, M-O-R-I-M-O-T-O. -O. And I'll tell you guys, when you look at this, it looks like they're a happy family and you would hope that they would actually be a happy family. But sometimes beyond those, once that door closes and beyond those four walls, you really don't know what the hell is actually going on. And that's really why you have to be careful what woman you choose to have children by. And that's also why you have to be careful, ladies, what man you choose. This dude is unequivocally a fucking thug. He's not a drill instructor. He's a bitch. He's a coward, and he's definitely not a damn father. He is a horrible person, but guess what? So is the mom. Somebody said this was out in Las Vegas or nearby Las Vegas. So for anybody who knows that mom, she should be shunned. She should not be accepted in the society. She should not be, she should not be around any more kids, nor should she be allowed to have any more kids. She has proven the fact that she is willing to watch her children die. And I honestly hope that the grandparents never let her see those kids again, because clearly DHS or DCFS or whatever child CPS, child protective services is not doing their job. So we can't just rely on the fact that yeah, they're not going to let these kids go see the mom. Because ultimately, if the grandparents wanted her to see them, then they will let her see them. And I hope that they don't. So now the responsibility is going to be on the grandparents. Let me give a shout out real quick to Courtney Jackson, who sent in a very, very nice super chat. Let me read what she wrote. Okay. I'm going to put some respect on her name. She sent in $20 and she said, keep up the good work. We really need, we are really needing to advocate for our babies now that we are in sheltering in place. I live in Texas, which I do too. And the number of child abuse cases have increased since children are being homeschooled. Wow. Thank you for your message, Courtney Jackson. And shout out to all my people in Texas. We're going to get through this and it's got to get better. And we cannot just sit and allow for these type of things to continue to happen. So again, if you see something, please say something. The National Child Abuse Hotline, let me see, where did she put it? It's out there and it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 800 for a child or 800-422-4453. If you don't know the number, Google it. Real easy. Google it. These two people don't need necessarily life in prison. They deserve death for what they did. I would love to see them put on an experimental rocket ship and launch their ass into outer space. Put them on the space program, send them to NASA. Let them test on them. Send them to space and let's see how well that they do or how quickly they can survive without any atmosphere. Oh, I'd love to see a videotape of that. Just watch the life just instantly leave the mother and the father's bodies for what they did to those precious innocent kids who could not speak for themselves and could not defend themselves in no shape, form or fashion. And there were three of those children that suffered. Not only did this baby that you see on my screen pay the ultimate price, 
but even now her siblings are having nightmares and Lord knows if they're going to be able to recover from this. And I hope and pray that they do. And I hope and pray that the grandparents do what's best by them and never allow that mother to see them kids again. Because it doesn't sound like she's going to get, get any jail time. A slap on the wrist. Ain't that some shit. All right. That's how we're going to close the story out. I'm going to say RIP to that baby Abigail Bennett. To the father. Boy, I hope they I hope they do something terrible to him in prison. I'd love to get a report on that. Jay, you ain't going to believe what happened to this dude in prison. I'd love to hear that. To this innocent soul. To this baby. RIP Abigail Bennett. To your siblings. We pray and, and hope that you guys grow up to become something great. Okay? This is your boy DJ Just J. We're the AFC where we advocate for children first. That is where our priority is. That is what all of our priority is. Shout out to all of our channel members. Shout out to all of our supporters and people on Patreon and everybody who continues to donate when you can find it in your budget. Please make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Click that thumbs up. Leave a comment and let me know what you guys think, okay? From my heart to yours, I love you guys. Thank you so, guys. Thank you, so guys. Da, 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 da.